Russ, welcome to the Make a Dent podcast. I'm so excited that you said yes and that we fit this in, and it's been such a fun day. I thank you for being here. Hey, thank you. I, I, it's a pleasure, and I'm excited just to be here with you. <laughs> okay, guys, so Russ Warner, we, <laughs> we <laughs> I, I am so excited. Like, we only have a certain amount of time for this round. We're going to do two rounds. We already discussed it. But there's a couple things that I want to dive into um, with Ghost Longboard, which you and Brent are partners on. We are, yes. Ghost Longboard in Utah, and oh my. So <laughs> I'm going to get into how I found you guys <laughs> and how kind of we connected <laughs> in a second, but let's give the listeners who don't know a very quick background on how you started. So if I understand right, didn't you start dabbling this like 10 years ago? Yeah, so my partner Brent uh, made one of these boards 10 years ago for his son Eric, and his son is best friends with my son, Caden, and he'd ride over to my house every day, and uh, there was this clear board sitting on my porch, and I kept looking at it saying, I want one of those, mm -hmm. and that, that was it, and so I asked Brent, hey, can I have one? He told me no for about four or five years, <laughs> and I thought, he's your neighbor. yeah, he's my neighbor, <laughs> yeah, and he just kept telling me no. So finally I said, come on, Brent, please give me one. So he found an old one that he made uh -huh. in his garage. He gave it to me. Okay. And I kept looking at it, staring at it for about another three more years. Kept mm -hmm. thinking, man, I need to put some wheels and trucks on this. It was just the deck. Oh, it was just the yeah, deck. Okay. Yeah. So I finally put some wheels and trucks on it, and I started riding around. I thought, I don't have any hobbies. I don't run. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything. All I was doing was working. Nothing fun in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you know, I was just like, I don't have a hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as a little kid, I was a skater. So okay. I thought, I think I can do this again. I yeah. think I can skate. You know, I'm 49, and, and it's only been 35 years. Did it, I have a question. Uh, did it, like, instill that, like, childlike interest in yes. you when you started riding? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was okay. like I was a teenager again. Yes. Yeah, okay. it made me feel, like, young and mm -hmm. free, like, you know, when you first get your driver's license, you get to go take off the car. And, yes. and, take off. and when you're a kid, the first freedom is a bicycle or a mm -hmm. skateboard. Some type of wheels. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's wheels. And, and I went out and I rode this thing. I was like, this is so much fun. Yeah. And so I asked Brent again. I go, okay, can I sell these? And he told me no. Uh -huh. <laughs> what, did, what was his reasoning? I, and I wish he was here so he could speak for himself, <laughs> but you know the reason. What was his yeah, reasoning? Well, well Brent, Brent didn't want a hobby. He didn't want another okay. job. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he's like, I already have one job. Mm -hmm. I am 50. I don't need another job. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what about a hobby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're persuasive. <laughs> yeah, and, and eventually he says, okay, Russ, because I, I, when I said, well, what if we just make enough money on these things that buy yourself a new car. Okay. And that's what got him. Yes. He's like, oh, okay. wait a minute. If we make, you know, $400, uh, I could get a new car. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's a car payment. I go, yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yes. <laughs> and, and you can tell <laughs> in the back of my head, I was like, you know, a little uh, bit more than that. As the horns yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just got to like, get him to say yes once. Yeah, yeah. And I got <laughs> the start. I got the end. You know, my yeah. foot was in the door. And, uh, I said, okay, you know, and it became like this challenge for me, like a video game. Like, okay, how do you get a high score? How do you market something yes. brand new? How do you, how do you get it out to the world for people to see? Yeah. And now, did you have? I want to get. I want to. I don't want to interrupt yeah. you, but I want to dive down this. Did you? Were you entrepreneurial your, your whole life? Yes. Yeah, so ever since I was a little kid, from you know a little kid when I was in middle school, I sold chocolates and suckers door to door. Okay. And to the hospitals, and uh, mm. I had a. Lawn care business, a newspaper business. Okay. I yeah, I've always been this little entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah, you know, my whole life, even in college, I owned a landscaping business. I owned um, a chemical company, all, all as a did teenager. Did you learn some? Did you learn some of that marketing there? Or was Ghost like your first time, really? Like, okay, like this is how now, I, I have to market it. No, mar marketing is kind of in my blood. I always okay. say I'm a marketing guy first, mm. and then everything else. Okay. Because if you can't sell it, it doesn't do yep. you any good. Yep. So. You know, I have I failed at a lot of little side businesses growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I don't look at them as fails. I think everything you you make a mistake on, you learn from. You have to learn. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. You don't do that. You don't hire, you know, your best friends. <laughs> oh my gosh, we could dive a whole pet. <laughs> we could do a whole <laughs> podcast on this. We, we could. We could. Yeah, I, I've gone down that road and okay. made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's better to keep your friends as friends. Absolutely. And, and family, I would and say. Fa and family is mm -hmm. right in that same bucket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've always been in love with technology, marketing, and building stuff. You okay. know, I, I've done a you know another little hobby I was doing. I was building mobile apps and games, and and it was kind of the same thing. Is mm -hmm. This little hobby of how you make a game 
that people play throughout the entire world. And yeah. so Ghost became a little bit that same as I wanted a product that was it, anyone could ride it in the entire world. Okay. And and how do you do that? How do you get it out there? Okay. So what was your strategy at first? Like when you got Brent to say yes, <laughs> what was your so first marketing strategy? How were you so, so telling the, the world? The first thing I did, I remember, was a Saturday. I went, I was sitting on my couch. I went to Shopify and opened up a Shopify okay. website. Step one. Yeah, step one. It was okay. like thirty nine dollars. Okay. You know, you can't go wrong starting a business yep. of thirty nine huh. bucks. And uh, I thought, great, I'll take a picture of the board. I'll put it on the website. And then it was like, okay, now I got to pe- let people see it. Yep. So, so what was the next step? Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Instagram was like every kid. I had teenagers, three teenagers. Yeah. And they're like, they're all the time on Instagram. Okay. So I thought, okay, I will take a picture of me riding the board on Instagram. Okay. And that's where it started. And all of a sudden, I got like 500 people liking it. Okay. And, and then 1,000. Were you just posting you riding the board and yes. pictures of the board? Yes. How many boards did you start off with? One. <laughs> One sick. I love that. What what year did you start Instagram? Do you remember? So this would have been, oh geez, uh, I think or how many 2017. Years ago? Okay. Yeah, it so was 2017 according to Instagram. So pictures of this one board. You're writing the board. It was winter time. Were you guys using? <laughs> oh, but there were no lights. It was ju- it was just no. a clear board. Yeah, right. it was a clear board. I bought some and trucks and wheels off eBay. Yeah. And I put it on it. And the clear board's stunning. I mean, the yeah. clear board's just like a shocker when you yeah, see it. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm in my coat, Yeah, and there's snow all over, and uh-huh. I'm riding down the sidewalk okay. you know, for the first video. So, okay, I, oh my gosh, I want to dive into this. So, <laughs> you started, this is, but this is the thing, like, you just, you just started. I think that most people get they, so they overthink scared it. to start. Like, yeah. you're like, okay, Shopify's 39 bucks, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Now I've, my, I've got my website. Now how do I get people to see my website? You're watching your kids. You're taking information from the world. Okay, I got to start at Instagram. Were you using any hashtags at that time, yeah, or just not, posting? Not at that time. I didn't know about hashtags. Okay. And and then I started learning about them. And and then I started saying, okay, what do you hashtag? And I started following everybody else's trends of mm. longboard, skateboard, and okay. and the very generic hashtags. Yeah. And then I started looking at Instagrams of how many people were following me or seeing me based off hashtags, I thought, wait a minute, what if people follow other hashtags? Mm. I thought, do people follow fitness? Do people follow Utah? Right. Do people follow Salt Lake City? Do mm. they follow tattoo? Yep. So I started playing around Ooh, of changing yeah. my tattoo, or my tattoos. Yeah. I started changing my hashtags almost every post. Okay. And trying to wow. see what grabs people. So mm. I would do it's real life moms, testing. dads, fitness, love, it didn't mm-hmm. really matter. I, I tried everything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one would like, boom. I'm like, wait a minute. What hashtag was that? Mm-hmm. And uh, Trial and by, you got to try stuff. Yeah, it was just <laughs> trial by error. And so, yeah, I'd post and the people are like, hey, I like it. Mm-hmm. Super cool. How do I order one? I'm like, well. My Shopify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, did you have your full, was it called, did you name it Ghost from the beginning? Um, from what the very it? beginning, yeah. I went and registered uh, Ghost Long Boards. Okay. And so... And and so I thought, okay, yeah. Then I I did the white label on GoDaddy, so they're going right to you know the yep. Longboard yep. dot com. And so I you're sending I'm people through the website. Yeah, yeah, to order. Up, yeah. And then I asked Brent, I go, what type of designs can we do on these? So he gave me ten designs on okay. a piece of paper. You know, one looked like a a turtle called Tortuga and Maui okay. and Fishbone. So he gave me ten designs. Did he, goes, he do those initial designs, or did you guys have someone do those? No, he did those. Okay. So yeah, oh he wow. drew them up, and I still have the original wow. paper he oh made them really? on. Oh, really? Yeah, That's so so it was really cool. cool. So I had ten ten to sell, okay, and and three shapes. So okay. I was like, okay, let's go for it. Okay, and then people started saying, hey, can I order that? And I'm like, okay, now I need to get wheels and trucks and a box and mm-hmm. and so everything was like, okay, um, where do I find wheels and trucks? Mm-hmm. Where do I find even a box? You know, That's and like the shape of the yeah that'll yeah fit the yeah long that'll one. fit it. And so I'm searching all over the internet looking for boxes, looking for paper i'm calling up ups and fedex and dhl and and they pick up the phone and ups came out to my house and said here do you need an account i go yeah i do well uh-huh. here's a printer is that you print labels okay they showed you yes that. yeah they showed me how to print labels so how long okay so you got to a point where i listened to your live the other day and we've talked but you got to a point where you're doing you said like about 10 orders a night or something yeah. out of your house yeah 
they were coming off of the website, yep. right? Okay, so you're doing 10. So there's a moment. <laughs> yeah, there's there a was. Moment. There okay, was that so moment. There's a moment, and the anniversary of that moment was just a few days ago, right? It, w- it was uh, May 29th and June 1st. Yes. Okay. So Last year of 2020. This, I'm, like, getting chills because I, I watched <laughs> your live the other day. So w- let's talk about what happened. So if I understand right, you're doing your 10 orders. You get them notified on your phone, right? Like Yeah, an yeah. There, and, and I love that ding. It was like, bing, every time there's mm, an order. Oh, I'm that's like, adrenaline? Yeah, it is. It was, and it dopamine? Was, you know, it was, it was <laughs> like, bing. I'm like, yes, another one. And, and you get like, like 10 a day. And I'm like, yeah. sweet. And Brent uh, would call me, and he'd stay after work and show up at my house about 7 o'clock at night drop the boards off on my living room floor and say, here's your 10 orders. Uh huh. Okay. And I'm like, sweet. And I put on an audio book and, and assemble them all night and, mm-hmm. and uh, box them all up in the morning and hit the UPS store. So before we dive into the moment, I, yeah. I want to describe for the podcast listeners what this board looks like. So the boards are ac- acrylic. Am I using clear. the right word? Yep, they're acrylic, clear. clear, clear, clear. Boards. So like yeah. you've never seen anything like it. If you've, if you've looked at a traditional longboard, it's wood. And there's great designs on them, but yep. these are clear. So you can see the ground beneath you. And they have so many designs now, um, which why you reference tattoos is I think you get a lot of inspiration we, from we that. We do, right? yes. So I- if you imagine this clear board, it's just like shocking. So definitely go Google it. So that's what you can envision as he's trying to describe, like packaging this up. And then there's this moment on TikTok, right? So yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so did your phone just like... Your phone blew up. Yeah, One yeah, night. yeah. So we got <laughs> these clear boards with light up wheels. They're really cool for people to ride around, just go cruising. And all of a sudden, you know, we, we were doing like this 10 a day. And so I had enough parts in my garage, you know, we could do, you know, we could fulfill all these orders. And it was May, May 29th. All of a sudden that morning, you know, I'm just I'm doing my regular work. And my phone just starts going crazy, just nonstop. Oh, my gosh. So... Uh, like bing, uh, yeah, bing, yeah. Bing. Uh, on, I mean, the point I had to mute it, and uh, and Brent calls me about eleven o'clock, like a.m. Yeah. Okay. In this panic. Yes. He's like, my phone won't stop. W- what is going on? Shut the website off. Mm-hmm. That's what he tells me. He goes, yes. You need to shut the website off. I go, I go, and and I was like, it was amazement. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I I love hearing this noise. Yes. And, and the reality hit him before me. You know, yeah. me, I was just in heaven, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, oh, no, oh, no. How did you realize what happened? Because didn't you think your phone was just, like, tripping out? Yeah, yeah. At first, I was, I'm going in the orders, and it's just order after order after order. I'm looking at him. So like, how what? did you, like, how did you find out what, what, what the so, hell happened? So I didn't. I, or at oh, this okay. point, I did not know until, <laughs> until, so I'm trying to figure out, we had, like, on uh, May 29th, there was, like, over 600 orders in, in that first day. Oh, my day. gosh. Yeah, and we're yeah. like, okay, oh, and that's in one day, and all of a sudden the next day, there was another almost six hundred orders. So there was like oh in two days gosh. more boards than we've ever made in our career. This is the entrepreneurial yeah. dream right here. Yeah, it was, but, it was, but and so there was I, panic initially, yeah, right? Yeah. So my my <laughs> daughter comes home from school and says, "Dad, did you see that you're on TikTok?" And I go, yes, "What there is, it is TikTok?" Oh. So you, had, you didn't know. Uh, I hadn't downloaded TikTok. And the so chills, you guys. Yeah. I have chills. So I download TikTok. I, I do hashtag ghost longboard. Mm-hmm. I find it. And there's this girl named Maddie in Ohio Okay. that bought a 48-inch uh, longboard, and mm-hmm. and she was showing it off. It was her first longboard. Okay. So she was just showing everybody. And sh- and she oh did gosh, not know. It. She only had maybe 300 followers, mm-hmm. you know, just friends and and uh, she didn't know what she was doing. Mm-hmm. She was just showing the board. Hey, look, I bought this board from Ghost Longboards out of so Utah. So it was like an unboxing. Yeah, it was an unboxing. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And she showed it off. And, and so my, my kids, the one that showed me, it was on TikTok. Okay. So at the same time, Brent is still yelling at me Yeah. <laughs> to turn off the website. Yeah. So I'm trying to turn off the website. I'm going to each of the products and just saying out of order, you know, out of stock, yeah. out of stock. I'm trying to go through and close off everything. Uh-huh. And, um, and I, and I finally think I got everything closed off uh-huh. and people are still finding ways to find <laughs> it. I mean, <laughs> whatever, some or yeah, some yeah they, they would buy a part, you know, or this and, uh, you know, I, I mean, anything they like could do. Yeah. They were finding loopholes to still order. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot get people to stop ordering. And at this, at this moment it was like, and I said, Brent, so I said, we need to decide. Mm, 
this oh okay yeah yeah this this was that decision. this is the moment this is the moment mm-hmm. where where he goes i don't want two jobs i go how about one mm-hmm. and uh i go i do i mm-hmm. i kind of want this yeah this, this is the most exciting thing from an entrepreneur to see something yes go crazy and i thought i do want this yeah and he didn't uh-huh. and th- and this where you know where the relationship did get intense yeah you know as partners you're like well you then i'm gonna do it without you yeah because i'm gonna do it i've already mm-hmm. made the decision i'm gonna do it yeah so are you on the ride or not yeah i think he went home and thought about it and you know we came back and 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 there was this uh there was this factory that was i was buying wheels and trucks from said russ Turn your website back on. Now, this guy's name was Alan, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I love this part of the story because you guys had turned it off. I would yeah. have, too. When I was listening yeah. to your live, I was like, shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what my mind said. And, yeah. and I've had to do that at Dottie's before when, like, we just got an insane amount of orders or, like, maybe two back-to-back, like, big orders. I've had to be like, I can't do anymore. Yeah, you just physically so couldn't do yeah. anymore. So there's this moment where you shut it down and you're you're talking you're trying to source parts now right because yeah. you got to fulfill like 1200 orders yeah and you're talking to your business partner about yeah. like hey are we doing this it, or not and he's like i don't have time to cut this many he mm-hmm. goes yeah, i do it at night and and on he goes i'm doing them on nights weekends and on my lunch break he mm-hmm. goes russ i can't make that many yeah so tell me about real quick because i want to dive into the partners thing real quick and then i want to talk about alan and then we're gonna have to do i just <laughs> we're gonna have to do that too but what do you think you said? Like, what was the conversation? What finally made Brent say yes? Do you think? I, I think it was, um, I think he saw that I was going to go forward with this no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I think he saw it as, wait a minute, I'm the inventor of this. Mm-hmm. If I say no, he will he'll go, go blow go this up. Yeah, he'll go, he'll go for, for it. And will I regret it mm-hmm. later on of not being a part of this company yeah. that's going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think it came down also to when I said, Brent, why don't you do it full time? Mm-hmm. And he had to think about, wait a minute. Y- are you, you're telling me that I could quit my other job mm. and I could work for myself yeah, and I could make twice the money, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and create my own hours. Yeah. And and I think that sunk into him when it, when he knew I was going to go for it no matter what if yeah. he came along or not. What's interesting about your guys' partnership from my outside perspective is it looks like the yin and yang. Yes. So we, like we, he we seems are yeah we are opposites. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why it works. Yeah. Do you think? Oh, absolutely. So I just think it's such a rare case. Like Ethan and I are very similar, which is very rare. Uh, we definitely have differences, but we're very very similar. But I think because of how we structured our business in the beginning, that's why it worked so well. Um, because partnerships are typically not they're a success hard. They're, story. They're hard. They're, they're hard. They're so yeah. what else, other than you guys are opposites, what else do you contribute to your success the on being partners? Yeah, You know, the, the yin and yang is, is the perfect thing. I mean, he he uh, has never owned a business. He's, oh, you know, I've been self-employed, mm-hmm. commissioned my entire life. Mm-hmm. He's always worked for somebody. Yeah. You know, he's a perfectionist in things. I'm a dreamer, uh, an yes. entrepreneur of visionary guy. Mm-hmm. And, and you almost need each other to keep like, he it's probably keeps you grounded oh, yeah. and like in the like, yeah, the real, the world. real world. Yeah. One foot at least. Yeah. But he needs you to have, that vision to, to bring it forward yeah because i keep dreaming of hey w- let's go do this yeah. let's go make this let's do this what do you think if people are in a partnership or thinking about going into a partnership what's like one piece of advice that you would say uh prior to saying yes to a partnership i i think a partnership a you have to have a partners that are all in um yeah. you know i i call it uh you know, Brett and I sat down and we call it the end of the day sweep is what I call it. Okay. Is, is the end of the day, whatever's not done, the owners have to f- do. Absolutely. And, and and so I call it the end of the day sweep. And uh, and that was our conversation is if emails aren't done, guess what? It's on us. Mm. If employees aren't trained, it's on us. If a board isn't cut, it's on us. Yep. If shipping doesn't go out, it's on us to do. Yep. And and that was the, the, the key to the partnership is i i don't believe you need a cheerleader as a partner right you know you don't need someone to say oh yeah you go for it i'm right mm. here to cheer you on mm. 
Now, a partnership is I'm going to do whatever it takes, both of us, yep. to end the day that the business is successful. It's not on you. It's not on me. It's both of us are going to do whatever it takes to sweep at yep. the end of the day. Yeah. And I think, too, being clear about expectations from the beginning. Because yeah. you can structure it differently, but if the expectations are unclear or not written down, yeah, I don't know if those you guys change. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah, I think at the beginning you don't know what those are, and, s- not a and until you get to the <laughs> end of the and yeah, until you get to the end of the day, and you're like, well, who is responsible for doing this part? Yep. Yep. And and uh, yeah, and you have to start writing them down and defining those roles. Yeah. And and that's why I like having an opposite of me because we both we could both run two different directions, and we're not tripping over each other, mm-hmm. and we're not overstepping each other, and yep. we both know. He knows the machinery so well yeah. and, and the design. I know the marketing and the growth so yes. well. Yeah. Um, I think one thing, a tip to that we did at Thirst prior to opening is I did an org chart. Now, <laughs> I did my best guess <laughs> for an org chart. Yeah. And then we just, and that was just me and Ethan's name <laughs> in the entire <laughs> org chart. But then you can kind of figure out roles and responsibilities just like you're saying as you go then you fill those in and then as soon as you can hire people you start moving yourself up the org chart you, you replace yourself you replace yourself but yeah, you have uh, to define those roles that's by so doing. that's really hard for entrepreneurs to do mm-hmm. and i think it was hard for me uh, there, there there was a breaking point on both of us on brent and there was a point where he could not be the only person that knew how to cut the boards yep and and i remember there was a time he actually said to me he goes well, if other people do it, what do I do? Yeah. And and mm-hmm. it was and the same thing happened to me. If if I'm not answering all the emails, then mm-hmm. what do I do? Yeah. Because I was answering these six hundred emails a day oh till two AM and yep. eventually we had to say, You're the owner. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have yep. to I go, Brent, I want you to go six deep, you know, on people know how to cut. And I'm gonna go six deep on people know how to assemble mm-hmm. and ship and six deep and people know how to uh you know, answer emails yes. and answer customers. You have to if you're going to yeah. scale. You yeah, have to if you're yeah. going to scale. That's one rule we have uh, at Thirst and Dotties is every position has to have their replacement. Yep. Getting trained to replace. I like six deep. That's very, very smart. I think for even like any business, but the production that you or, have. Or cross trained. Yes. You know, y- and you have to think about, you hate to say, well, what if you got COVID or what if you got in an accident? And, yeah. and that was uh, our talks. I go, okay, Brent, if you get COVID and you're out, sick mm. who else can do your job yeah and i go what if i'm out yes and you have to always think those things through that there are others you that will do it they will not do it exactly how you do it mm-hmm. that that's a given nope yeah you can train 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 but they will do employees will don't have the heart in it that mm-hmm. you do yep. even managers mm-hmm. you know they're not all in it's, it's not, not their theirs. baby they it's can care baby. a lot but yep. it's not their child yeah and it's that's different that's it why is. it's different i think too i do some business consulting and what I tell people when they're they're trying to systemize it and scale is you're going to train them and they're going to do 70 percent of what you do if you're lucky yeah now but you got to think about it because if you can do 10 times the production at 70 percent you're still up a significant a lot a significant amount versus trying to do it all yourself and 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 I call a lot of the people I call it um tripping over dollars to pick up dimes yes a lot of huge. people a this lot of huge. people you know i i say there's three different work forces there's the five dollar hour work mm-hmm. the fifty dollar hour work and the five hundred dollar hour work and i yes. said brent you and i's job is to always do the five hundred dollar hour work yes and now we can always hire for the 50 and and consult and yep. the five i don't want to catch me down there assembling boards mm-hmm. you know now if it has to be done I know how to do the $5. Do hour. Yeah, yes. I'm going to do it no matter what. But I, I need you to focus on the $500 hour work. Yes. And and that's, you know, best use of Brent's time is not out always being the guy cutting every board. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the best use of me assembling every board and shipping. Absolutely. You know, I go, let's take us to that next level as entrepreneurs of, of forward thinking of the big stuff mm-hmm. and, the, and the higher end stuff. Did you, how did you, did you like... How did you figure out some of that stuff? Because did you like podcast books? Did you learn (laughs) that in a different field? Because you are scaling extremely well from it, it seems. And that's exactly right. You have to. I love how you put that about thinking about it of the hourly work. If you're going to scale, if you're going to be happy (laughs) as a (laughs) business owner, I think. (laughs) But how did you learn that? Like, was there a mentor? Like, how did you learn that? 
I, I, I think that's a lot, just uh, trial and error, but I think there's a lot of great books. I mean, one of my favorite books out there, uh, one is called Ken Blanchard, Raving Fans. Okay. Um, that book is one I've probably bought 100 books, 100 of those books and given them away. Oh, raving Fans. Yeah, Raving Fans by okay. Ken Blanchard. Um, there's, there's another book called The Jackrabbit Factor. So let me talk about both of them. So Raving Fans tells you that the customer... So when you go to a restaurant and you order the food and the waiter comes over and asks you, how was your food? Mm-hmm. What's the typical answer? Great. Yeah. Good. That means you, that means you failed. Mm-hmm. If they just say great, good, or fine, you failed. Yep. They didn't walk away as a raving fan. They're never going to go post about it, tell their mm-hmm. friends about it, mm-hmm. come back 100 million times. They're not raving fans. Yeah. And so as a business, you have to create raving fans. So okay. when I started Ghost Boards, I wanted everybody – so happy with their board. So I was only going to put the wheels on, the bearings, the trucks that I personally wanted yes. on it. And I was only going to make it yes. exactly how this I wanted so it. Huge. And so if I'm happy riding the board th- and it's the best quality, I didn't cheap mm. anything on it. And then I know the customer is going to be happy. And then warranty, I think was important for me is like still today, someone's riding their board and their wheel doesn't work right. Call me up. I send you a new one. No mm-hmm. questions asked. This is important because it gives you, I don't know if you're, I'm sure you relate to this. I know you relate to this. <laughs> but like you then have the passion to be proud, to go out with the enthusiasm yes. that you do and talk to people on gram or in yep. person and they catch that excitement. Yeah. And you can't do that if you're not proud of it. Yeah. If you don't love your product. Now I look at some of these builders, they build these crappy box homes that like are two feet from their neighbor. I'm thinking, how do you walk away from that and you're proud, proud of that of house? And mm-hmm. and that's going to be there for 100 years. And you drive by that and you're thinking, yeah, I did an awesome job. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. You know, I think you have to really love what you do. Mm-hmm. And you have to be passionate. And and that is viral. And oh, and, and if you create raving fans, and that's why we love the unboxing. And we, we feed on people loving their board and can't wait mm-hmm. to open it up and see it and and the letters and tears we get little kids is the best birthday ever. Oh my it was the only thing I wanted, that you know, and, and those little incredible. those little letters and, and emails and it's like, oh my gosh, that's why I'm doing this it's, again. Mm-hmm. And and that it, fuels your fire more. Oh, it does. It's <laughs> like, yes, we nailed it. We're we have raving fans. Yes. And they want to tell all their friends about us. Yep. Now, you know, you think about everybody on social media, they buy products every day. How many times are they posting about something they bought yep. every day? They're not. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, only things they truly love. love. Scenes, but you guys are just doing such a good job of that. And I think people are, they they get a little bit worried about either someone competing or like, they are. Oh, I'm giving away this board to this person who maybe only has this many followers, but you never know. You guys are doing such a good job of that. And I think it's it's spreading so much like happiness and joy. Like everyone is so elated. (laughs) when they get their board and like i just think you guys are doing a stellar job we have to wrap up for this one but i want to next time talk about alan a little <laughs> bit and about how he told you guys to turn the website back on yeah and yeah. it's been that, a year. that was a scary point it's yeah. been a year since that moment let's just talk about approximately like your production now so people can kind of see that uh that yeah see that growth yeah so so the crazy thing last year 2020 of june we sold nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of boards in one month yeah and 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 we'll go to that part of the scariness of what alan told me you know and we'll talk about that and how scary that is to sell that and and right now and so we we had this amazing year last year and and one of the things i didn't want to do starting a company ever is i call it be the fidget spinner okay and Mm -hmm. where you're one and done yeah or some trendy or be a one-hit wonder song yes and so we're we're continuing always making sure our boards are made amazing and mm. the warranty is there that people love them with new designs and keep it going and and so now we're at a point where we're uh, we're growing and and we've studied out we've learned a lot of you know, a lot of little <laughs> things to make things more efficient yeah. and and with our time and now we're you know we're selling in wholesale stores across the world uh, mm. we're selling still online and we're opening up our first Retail, retail store yeah. in, in, in uh, like this week. Yeah. Okay, and week. it's at the outlets at the of Lehigh. Outlets of Lehigh. Yes. Okay, congratulations. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's We're gonna go check exciting. it out. So you guys, we will come back to a round two with us. We're gonna talk about Alan. We're gonna talk about more about going viral on 
six o'clock. And how and do y'all become a fidget spinner? They're not gonna. They're not gonna be a fidget spinner. I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you, Russ, so much. Now they can find you at, at Ghost Longboard on all your platforms. Yeah. Yep. Do you have anything else you would like to share about making a dent in the universe to the listeners? Yeah. You know, I, I think making a dent. Uh, there's a few things. When we started this, there's a we had our um, main things we want to be is a family friendly company. Mm -hmm. That was number one. Uh, no, number two was be able to give back. Mm -hmm. And so right now we've given to Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, Underground Railroad, oh, amazing. and we've given even some of the kids that all work here scholarships. And, uh, oh my gosh. and so that was number two is make sure we always are giving back. And number three is always be proud of our product and what we're, make, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and make sure that everybody enjoys it mm -hmm. and is happy. We want people outside off their phones. And yes out uh, just have uh, enjoyment. I love, those are core values. We can talk about core values next time too and about how they can help guide your company. I love them, Russ, thank you so much. Thank you. I love uh, hanging out with you and hanging out here. And thanks for being on the podcast. It's up and coming soon. You guys check out Ghost Longboard. They're gonna have some very exciting things coming up. I've seen a couple things. I'm not gonna say it now. We'll wait till next time. And thanks for joining us on the Make a Dent Podcast.